I want to pivot to your career. Um, you started your career in the M&A group at the investment bank Drexel Burnham, actually where we met. During your time there, the firm hit financial difficulties when the junk bond market, as we used to call it, collapsed, and the firm's liquidity issues forced it into bankruptcy uh, in 1990. So that's a lot of drama for your first job. Um, so can you talk a little bit about what the experience was like for you and how it shaped the way that you and your co-founders founded Apollo and think about running a business? I have to say awesome. No better experience. I mean, even it, in its demise, the whole notion of borrowing short and lending long is just such a good cautionary tale. It is the classic way a financial services company goes out of business, which is a mismatch of liquidity transformation. But you know, more importantly, if I thought about the business and why I joined and what I experienced, we were working with businesses that in many instances were being built or didn't exist, think cable television, think sell, things that we take for granted today, and financing them with products that didn't exist. And the whole notion of just working with a blank sheet of paper and thinking about what should be rather than what is, I think it's just the best training ever. And you know, to the extent possible, have really tried to bring that same skepticism, that same creative thought, that same willingness to try new things to Apollo. And also this notion of a healthy skepticism for the status quo. Um, as I say, it, we try to encourage intellectual insubordination, which is very close to just outright insubordination, which makes the place ungovernable. But being able to question without regard to seniority, without regard to anything, um, I think it's just one of the healthiest things we possibly can have and we're still of a size and scale where we can have that debate. And it's, it's really important that we never lose that.